next part of, uh, of today's agenda is uh, to have the conversation with uh, this uh, lovely gentleman over here. And uh, yeah, so we have uh, representatives here uh, from uh, Rec Online, Imre, uh, from Amazie, Martin, uh, from uh, Agile Drop, uh, Alice. It, did you pronounce it correctly? <laughs> okay, perfect. And uh, from Doptica, uh, Maciek. <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah, so uh, guys, just for the short intro, would you mind to tell us what is your business and how is it unique? Uh, I think you should turn it. Try to move it up. We should start doing the mic yes, check I think before we start. All right. So, yeah, okay. so my name is Imre, I'm from React Online, a digital agency in Eindhoven, the Netherlands. Our business is unique because we are all very much involved into Drupal right from the start. Thank you. My name is Martin. I'm uh, working for Amazio. Um, Amazio provides a platform as a service uh, running the infrastructure of the customer, which is different to other um, platform as a services, and it's also completely open source. Uh, so hi, my name is Maciej. I'm from Droptica. Uh, in Droptica, uh, we do not only Drupal, but we do also React, JavaScript, uh, we do Celius, Symfony, and other, other PHP frameworks. Uh, we are from Poland, uh, and we are unique because we are very technology-oriented, so we're not an agency per se, but we're more of a, like a tech agency. Uh, yeah, that's, that's our specialty. Hello, all. Um, I'm Alesh. Uh, I'm head of client services with a development agency from, from Slovenia called Agile Drop. Uh, we are close to 90 people now and we primarily do staff augmentation and help uh, other digital agencies when they are in need of uh, skilled, skilled Drupal developers. Right, and here is our lovely interviewer for today, Michelle. Yeah. So please do introduce yourself and I will be just helping out with the audience and with the room anyway. So All right. go on. Um, my name is Michel van Veldi. I am a, uh, a well, active member of the Drupal community. Uh, I've been previously board member of the Drupal Association and I ran my own agency for 14 years, which I sold two years ago. Um, and as of January, I am an independent uh, brand strategist. So therefore, I was invited here to interview these lovely fellow Drupal community members. All right. Um, one question I have. We, we, I, I just uh, listened to, uh, to Dries, um, and he, uh, he's been talking about well, Drupal 7, uh, Drupal, Drupal 10, Drupal, Drupal 11. Um, the question I have for all of you is, do you perceive Drupal as a CMS, a content management framework, a DXP? How do you perceive Drupal nowadays? Yeah, I can answer that. Well, I suppose, uh, to me, Drupal out of the box is more of a CMF, but you can build a DXP on it, for example, but you can build other things on it as well. Yeah. Uh, so it's, yeah, that, that, that's probably what I would say. That it's, a, it's, it's more of a CMF from the out of the box and then build, build on it whatever you want. All right. And Martin, how do you look at it from? Yes, yeah, similar um, as content management system. Um, you can build things around to maybe uh, make it a DXP. For us as a hosting company, um, we want to provide a service that you can have the freedom to add further things and don't have to reinvent the wheel, use same, frame, uh, same frameworks, use same workflows, things like that, yeah. so that you can make a DXP out of it if you want to do that. All right. Yeah, so I'm a self-taught salesperson, so I will perceive it any way the client wants to perceive it. Ooh. I can then explain it any way, uh, either way. But obviously, as a development agency, we use it as a framework most of the time. Yeah. But I can see it as a DXP just the same for those clients who are ready for it. Most of the clients are asking for a CMS these days, so all three works, and it's the same to me, actually. All right. Um, I have to agree with Dimre. 
Um, it's basically, so I never wrote a line of code in my life. So um, CMS, DXP, um, I know what are the differences. But again, if you have a client that um, is looking for a DXP, let's say a more enterprisey client, then obviously it's a DXP. Uh, if you build a somewhat uh, more, um, or let's call them not so complex websites, then I guess it's a CMS. Uh, so it, it, it boils down to the client and their wishes. All right. Staying, staying with you, um, do you do see a change in, in demand in the market currently or, or recently? Uh, yes. Could you elaborate? Uh, um, so fr from my perspective, again, working in sales, it's, um, it's very difficult to sell Drupal for a simpler websites because um, the amount of time and the amount of money that needs to go into building such a simpler website is probably better done with, with some other framework, not, mm -hmm. not in Drupal. So the move from those more simpler, let's call them stuff, to more complex is, is obvious for quite some time now, and hence also the, the complexity, the, the duration of those contracts that Drupal is involved with is getting, is getting longer, yeah. I see, every year. All right. And Imra, do you, do you see the, the, the same happening? Yeah, so we had a, uh, an RFP a couple of months ago with a client asking, hey, should we be having a DXP or CMS or a framework? Mm -hmm. So the response was, well, it's sort of all three, right? But I think that the bigger the brand, the bigger the company, uh, the marketing people in there will, will talk about DXP more often mm -hmm. in, instead of talking about a CMS. So I think it's related also to the large largeness of the brand and the maturity of the brand as well. Yeah. All right. Do you see the same thing at MAZIO? Um, we have uh, several clients uh, calling yeah. their solution yeah. at DXP, yes. Yeah. Um, some are real big ones, some are smaller. Um, what, what he said, what the client needs, what the client wants. Yeah. And uh, yeah, as mentioned before, we, we want to provide a, a system that the agency is actually implementing that DXP solution if the customer wants one, yeah. um, that, that they can do that mm -hmm. easily. Yeah. But what she, do you see a change in, in, in demand over the last couple of years or two years? Or um, not, not really, because we are not so into the solution um, yeah. architecture when it's, it's mm -hmm. becoming uh, um, 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 so architecting or, or building it. Yeah. We take it when it's there. Um, on, on RFPs, we see more the DXP thing, 100%, um, um, but yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, if, if, if I can add to that, uh, I was actually looking at uh, what the clients look for recently, because right now we have composable CMSs, right? Trees is saying about composable. Yeah. Uh, composable commerce is actually the, 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 the keyword mm -hmm. that, that, you know, is now trending. Mm -hmm. uh, well, AI, maybe it's trending, but composable commerce is a trending in commerce. I was looking at that, uh, but we are now in the composable, the XP, but a lot of clients are on the headless right now, which we were at on the headless like four years ago, maybe, mm -hmm. at the headless was starting up five years, maybe, yeah. uh, and the clients are just getting there. So for them to actually to go to the XP, uh, to go to composable, that's probably like in the five years we're going to be talking about it for such a long time and then the clients are going to be still catching up. Yeah. D do you see the same thing happening, uh, uh, the same at, at MAZIO, that, that composable is the next thing, the next way? Yes, wave? absolutely. Um, what, we, uh, what we see is that, that there are more and more requirements for decoupled. That was years now ago, but mm -hmm. now it's coming that uh, that uh, customer also wants to, customer also wants to deploy ML or AI models. And uh, we as a platform, we want to make sure that uh, this deployment is, is possible into into Kubernetes, which is a thing with, with AI models as well. At the end, um, whatever is part of your composable uh, structure, um, we want to support that and we are currently doing uh, um, our first things with ML uh, as well, uh, ML ops, and yeah, providing providing a good solution. Um, Dries also mentioned that that uh, this will come more and more um, um, with ChatGPT. Uh, we believe customers are, will have their own models, which they train, 
and then which which have to work, and that's part of the composable world. Yes. All right. All right. Nice. Um, so so we we just come under crisis. Uh, uh, there's been a pandemic. Um, business has been good. I've been talking to quite a few already. Business has been good. Um, but what have been the challenges over the last year or two years? What what, what was the major challenge, Imre? So I think uh, getting back into the routine of going back to the office, and I see that people appreciate going back to the office. So uh, it's sort of a hybrid form, mm -hmm. but I speak to a lot of people that will say, well, you know, I'll, if I'm looking for a job or if I were to find another job, uh, I'd like to have an office around the corner. So going back to the office, getting back into, the, into that routine, while at the same time we've been delivering projects like fully remote, right? So 100% remote during, yeah. during COVID. So it works well. So a big change is that, that today we do a lot of our sprint planning meetings remotely where before we would have to meet in person. Yeah. Alice, what do you, what's your opinion? Um, <coughs> what I saw is that a lot of clients became more cautious about how to move forward with maybe, so Obviously, the marketing budgets in such time as are the first ones on the chopping block, so that that puts every digital agency also in a in a tough mm -hmm. spot because you never really know will they go forward with it, will they I don't know hesitate. So I think that maybe from from Q3 of the last year, uh, there was this sense of hesitation on on mm -hmm. the client side. Um, no one really broke the relationship with you, but it never really went anywhere. So it's like, like a decisions land and the decision has still been, hasn't been made. So it's kind of a waiting game uh, right. or has been. It's, it, I think it's getting better now, uh, but kind of a still not out of the, out of the woods. Yeah. Well, see, is, is, that, is that what you encounter as well currently in the market, a bit, a bit of a hesitation? Probably yes. Uh, so the interest rates gone up. Uh, you yeah. know the downturn. Uh, clients looking more cautiously at their budgets. We do see that. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard a phrase. I don't remember exactly where uh, who said it. It's not mine, but but I heard it. So, uh, pardon me for the language, but the clients, uh, as you know, the digitalization after COVID and during COVID was happening really f fast, and and there was this fear of missing out. Mm -hmm. Now the clients have more a fear of fucking up. Uh, you know, you, you want to watch your yeah. money, make sure that you go through this, go to the other side of the downturn and actually survive rather than just, you know, full throttle ahead. Uh -huh. So that, yeah, that it, it, you see that, yeah. You see, see people thinking more, more cautiously about what to spend money on. Is it going to be an investment? Mm -hmm. it, will it bring the money back? Yeah. Whereas initially, uh, you know, a year ago even, you had the situation where you just, like, everybody was full on into into the, the digital world online uh, like d it, did it make sense every single time nobody thought about it you just you, you knew you have to go forward with it now people are actually thinking do we have to do all that maybe we have to mm -hmm. prioritize yeah it's changed all right um so when you look at your drupal business um what are, do you see as the major opportunities for the next two years, you know, what, 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 where is the market going, and, and, and how do you see what, what, what your role within that market? Sure. So what Dries just said, the abandoning of Drupal Seven, that's yeah. probably some business opportunity there, because mm -hmm. there are people who are still waiting, hoping for the next year, uh, and they will have to move eventually. And some of them will move off of Drupal, but yeah. some of them will have to update. So maybe that's something which will you know give us the next wave of mm -hmm. Drupal work maybe so that, that it's, it's it's interesting to see that uh, that's so, so that's that's one thing uh, pretty much yeah other than that digit digitalization overall uh, I wonder what AI is gonna bring I think it's unclear yet in my opinion uh, how things are gonna change mm -hmm. uh, so is it an opportunity or is it a threat that's <laughs> Yeah, we're going to have to see, but I'm excited to see what's going to happen because it's going to be interesting. Yeah, 
and, and, and Martin, so, so, so what is, uh, we, we discussed the, the monolithic versus decoupled, uh, composable. What, is that something you see as a major opportunity for uh, um, AGIL? Yes, absolutely. Um, the, the composable web, we, we recently had a webinar uh, about that. We really start pushing towards that. It was in our platform every uh, si since the very beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, it was supporting it. But now we see that, that more and more companies are going towards that way. And uh, yeah, it's, it's good that we have it, that we experience that it's seamlessly able, to, uh, integrated to do that with, with our solution. Um, yeah. yeah. And um, we also just discussed, well, you, you, you thought AI as, as a, a, a possible threat, a possible opportunity. What's your take on that? Well, obviously we're looking into AI and we're trying it out ourselves. On the other hand, I think if we're, if we're honest, honestly looking at what clients are asking, they still need help with their data and their analytics. So they're, I think in many ways, they're nowhere near getting, hey, could you build me an AI integration? Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, we are obviously looking into it, the possibilities, the way that we can enrich uh, clients their lives, but they themselves, they don't see the opportunities, they don't have the questions about it yet, but we need to help them with that. Mm -hmm. And do you use already AI for, for writing code already? Not for code, for content a little bit. Um, yeah. So I'm giving a presentation later on, try to put some AI in there. Didn't right. work already, but anyway, so trying out ourselves first, yeah. All right, excellent. Um, what about you? And uh, what, how do you see the future with, with AI, well, happening all around us currently? Um, so we, we can ride that wave as long as we know how to. Yeah. Um, basically, it's just another tool in, in, in our toolbox. Um, we, I personally have been using it probably from, from, from day one or day two. Mm -hmm. um, we also, mainly for content, um, I also tinkled around with, with um, if AI could help me write some sort of code for, I don't know, a Chrome extension and it worked even for me. So maybe yeah. I lied before when I said I didn't write a line of code. Actually, I didn't. I just told the chat G GPT what, what I would like to do and the code worked because I, I, I gave it to my, to my coworkers and they said, yeah, that, that would work. So it's a lot of opportunity and, um, but on the other hand, there is still the politics of it which probably will put some constraints on it. So. Uh, um. I, I, I saw the first um, uh, 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 basically a, a job positions coming available as uh, prompt writers. Is, um, so writing a prompt, code can be delivered, etc. Is this something that you see in the future that happens at uh, uh, Agile as well? That that you have prompt writers um, at your disposal? I mean, not really, because um, every position within a company is so specific that um, you cannot learn a person who is not a marketer per se, how to get the best out of AI mm -hmm. by writing prompts because yeah. it, 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 it would hardly make sense. So I guess that the marketer who is by nature a marketer uh, would do much better alone as a prompter, as, as getting to the whatever he want, he or she wants sooner, quicker, better. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't see that this position could be anyhow valid in let's say six months to 12 months. Six to 12 months, but uh, I mean, when you look at like, like in five years time, do you foresee a future? No. No. No, not, right. not for a job position prompt writer, no. All right, no. interesting. All right, um, what about you, Masi? Um, well, so, so with AI, you have to probably like two things. Because, for example, we use, already use AI at work. We use Copilot for programming, yeah. and it saves our clients money because it's like 12. Uh, we didn't do exact measurements, but our developers assume that it's between 10 to 25% faster they deliver, and depending on the framework as well. Because Drupal, it helps. Yeah. Uh, but, for example, if you write Next.js or React, it helps a lot. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and then they actually call themselves tab developers. You just write in what you want, and you click a tab, and you kind of get it. Yeah. Uh, so it's tab de t tab development, what, what their developers call it sometimes. Uh, so so you see a lot of a lot of changes there. Also, there are inter interesting things. I'm not sure. Uh, for example, that there are already SaaS products which, if you give them a Figma file with a the design, they, they turn it into yeah. Next.js code. And this code is not yet perfect, but it's decent, you would yeah. say. And now if you take all the, all the CMSs, cloud CMSs, which, so if, if you had another AI which would kind of understand your Next.js app and would create a backend for it, because it's fairly simple often, like an image, a title, you know. Yeah. A, so if, if you give it like the, the code or a Figma file and it understands what sort of fields it should create, well, then you kind of paste in the Figma, it turns it into a Next.js app, it and connects it to the back, and you maybe have to tweak a little bit. Yeah. But that's, you know, sometimes now it's a, you know, a week's worth of work of someone, and mm -hmm. then it kind of almost is being done automatically. automatically. So I see that potentially happening. So like these products are already out there, and they are not great, but they, yeah. they, they have small gaps to be filled, really. Mm -hmm. like, so so, so that, that's one thing. Uh, so that's on the development side, right? On, on the other side, uh, we have clients uh, who look for AI implementations. It's, an, mm -hmm. it's very interesting because we have a lot of clients, for example, especially startups, saying that we, for example, we estimate a project for them or we build a project for them and they come to us, could we add an eye to that? And mm -hmm. I'm like, hmm, yeah, where? No. Anywhere, but it would <laughs> enable us to get more funding. Yeah. Ah. So, so there's a huge, like, huge focus from the whole, you know, IT society to use AI in any way possible anywhere, because yeah. that's just, you know, pulls right. in money. So, so that's another, that's another thing. But it will yep. bring progress solutions. Over time. It will be bring progress. I think. All right. Very uh, good. Yeah. Very good. Um, yeah, we're nearly ending the, uh, the, this, uh, this, uh, this conversation. Um, is there something you would like to share with the audience? Um, I'm start with Imre. Is there something you would like to share with the audience as well for, for the finish of this? Uh? Well, I think uh, being part of the Drupal community for, for, for the time that I've been, yeah. I think doing, doing marketing for Drupal and telling the stories about, about everything that we do with Drupal Bringing our clients to stage is still a very important thing that lies on our shoulders as agencies and as companies. Yeah. And I know that, uh, that Drupal, uh, the Drupal Association are working towards setting up more professional marketing. So there is things happening there for sure. But still, I think it's our task to, to make sure that we have a solid story next to all the other major platforms and DXP platforms that are out there and let the world know on the amazing things that are happening around Drupal. So, yeah. All right. Um, Martin, what you would you like to share with uh, the audience? Yes, so, um, so we are, as we are not an agency, but what um, we, we coming out of an agency, of a Drupal agency, and um, what I see in our companies, um, what we learned about all the, uh, about Drupal and open source and all these things, so how deeply is in our culture, even if we are not actively programming um, um, Drupal solutions or contributing to Drupal as, as a Maisie O anymore, um, but uh, as, as a culture and, and, and the way to work, and it's so deeply in there, and I was not, uh, before I joined the Maisie O, I was not part of that uh, Drupal world at all and I, I really think it's amazing and it should continue um, it's really cool yeah all right excellent yeah I have a similar thing it's my first Drupal gem I've never been uh, at a Drupal gem and looking at what the Drupal Association in the Netherlands achieves is fantastic thanks so it's very nice to be here. Yep. I'm, I'm super happy we, we can be a part of that. And yeah, that's that's. Thank you very much. And it's great to have you here as well. Thank you. All right, and then the final words. So, um, obviously, we all love Drupal. Um, but maybe this will sound blasphemous coming coming from me, but um, I do think that um, some caution is in the following years is is advisable. Uh, I would say diversify. Let let let's still make Drupal the first choice that we do, but um, it's um, it's worth looking into into uh, some some 
some broader perspectives perspectives also. All right. Well, thank you very much for attending and Drupal, uh, the Drupal Jam and, of course, sponsor the Drupal Jam as well. Um, uh, and great to have you all here. I'm going to hand it over to you. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right. Indeed. Thank, thank you, you, gentlemen, for joining us. All right. And uh, yeah, we had quite a discussion uh, about the, uh, the business questions, but yeah. we will continue our panel with uh, other representatives uh, of uh, our sponsors, and we will be diving a little bit deeper into, into technicalities just after that. Absolutely. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Cheers. Cheers. We are about to dive deeper into the technicalities, into the technical questions, and I'm happy to welcome here on this uh, stage uh, Tom Van Vliet from the Finlist, yeah. Heine uh, Delster from uh, uh, Limon Grün, uh, Jeffrey Burton from Synetic, and uh, Bro uh, Bur uh, Bjorn uh, Breyer from Swiss. So. Gentlemen, thank you for coming uh, and joining us here today. So I think we can start with the very same question, uh, the, uh, the first one. So if you could introduce yourself and uh, tell us about your companies, your businesses, in order for everyone to understand uh, your area of expertise. Test, test. Yeah. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Bertoon. I'm a solution architect at Synetic, which is part of uh, Label 34. And we focus on Drupal from I think around 10 years now, because I started 10 years ago, 12 years ago, maybe even. And we have diversified a little bit uh, with Laravel and Shopware as well. But most of our projects, uh, which are content uh, driven, are uh, built in Drupal. Thank you. Well, my name is uh, Tom van Vliet from, uh, from the company Finlist. I've been working at Finlist for about 10 years as well, but I've been working with Drupal. Um, uh, some more years. I think I started with Drupal 6, building myself a lot of websites. I think I built hundreds of websites, but nowadays I'm a team lead for our Drupal division. And um, what I uh, mostly like to do is build sophisticated websites, complex websites that have integrations with other um, frameworks. And I think Drupal really is uh, good in, uh, in, this, uh, in this field. Um, I'm going to give the word to you now. Thank you. I'm Heine Deelstra. I'm the uh, partner, and lead I'm partner and lead architect at Limon Groen. Uh, we specialize in Drupal, Symfony, and React. These are the three technologies we use. Uh, we mostly use uh, Drupal for content-heavy sites, often also with uh, uh, connections with other systems. Um, uh, and we use, we mostly specialize in accessibility and security for those sites. My name is uh, Björn Brella. I'm from uh, Swiss, uh, the uh, digital agency from Leiden. We do sustainable digital change for our clients and do that uh, for mostly non-profits and governments and uh, people in that uh, corner. We do that for Drupal and Laravel. Oh, Thank you. Okay. And my microphone's not on, <laughs> which no, is awesome. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we've been doing that for a while, but only since uh, Drupal 8, since Drupal 8 was a, such a giant leap forward for, for the whole Drupal ecosystem, I think. And that's uh, the moment we stepped in. All right. So um, as we are with you, um, I'm really, really into Drupal Jam, and there's a lot of tech talks here. Um, could you? share the audience, what's, what are the key advantages of using Drupal over other content management systems? I think that the, there's, a, there's a few things that are, that are really useful and great about Drupal. And at one side you have stability, especially since we are uh, in the new age where we are using Symfony and uh, uh, starting to connect with the rest of the PHP community, finally. Yeah. Uh, I think that, that uh, Drupal also, uh, offers stability that no other CMS really does in such a regard. If you also look at security, the security, how security is handled in Drupal is extremely well. If you look at uh, other CMS, 
Success. And a lot of the clients we work with think, think that's a really important part. Mm. It's also why we have uh, just uh, the ISO uh, 27001, it's hard in English, yeah. but also the Dutch NEN 7510, which is for um, um, healthcare. Yeah. And uh, Drupal does, is a really, really good fit for that kind of client. All right. And Heine, do you, do, yeah, you've been working on Drupal for a long time from a security perspective. Of course, security, really important. Uh, could you share some, some, some other uh, advantages of, of Drupal? Uh, I really like the field system uh, and the entity system, so it's very easy to uh, make entities and reuse uh, a lot of existing components in those entities uh, and have a standardized way uh, to approach that. And there may be other uh, content management systems that have the same advantage, some hosts, some not. Uh, but I also like that I'm completely free to do what, what I, what, whatever I want because I can easily extend Drupal and, uh, yeah. and change it the way I like. Yeah, I see Tom nodding here. Is, is, that, is that something I you... I think this is the, the key element to, to Drupal, the modularity. So yeah. I, I, I always like to send us there's a module for that, you know. There's, there's a module a, for that, You yeah. can really find everything. And when I compare it to other systems, we do as well at Finalist. Uh, I think uh, Drupal, th this is the main advantage, the, 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 the large number of modules which are well maintained by, by and, and uh, keep kept secure by guys like you, <laughs> yeah. uh, that, that do it from, uh, from uh, within the commu community, so uh, yeah. I really like it. All right. And Jeffrey, what do you... Um, yeah, I totally agree with uh, <laughs> my, uh, my colleagues here, but um, what I also like and what I see when using other frameworks as well is that one of the big differences is that uh, the field system, which also has a, a really good CRUD system as well, out of the box, which means you can easily create, customize your entity content model, but also have the UI to manage it. So from a site builder perspective, it, it has a great advantage uh, from a time to market advantage. Mm -hmm. And yeah, when you want to customize things or go crazy with it, you can uh, do a lot of it, uh, with it as well. So there is really, um, uh, a lot of broad advantages, also from a security standpoint. Uh, the changes also to accessibility and supporting that uh, with the new Claro uh, theme, for instance. But there are still a lot of things also that we uh, need to upgrade in the future as well. What you can see with integration from API first standpoint, where it has a really good step forward, but it's not there yet. Mm -hmm. So yeah, a lot of good things coming. Um, and a lot of things are already set in motion. Uh, based on something uh, from the community standpoint, which is really greatly supported. All right, excellent. Um, and f when you look at, uh, well in, the, in the previous uh, discussion uh, uh, with the sponsors, we were talking about uh, decoupled, we were talking about the well, traditional way of, of building a website with Drupal, um, the, the monolithic way, and we're now talking about composable. Is this something, a, a trend you see as well, um, Jeffrey? Um, yeah, we at Synetic have like a best of breed approach. So it could be composable, it could be monolithic. It really depends on the project in our perspective. Um, you can go crazy with uh, Mach perspectives and go microservices all the way with everything customized, but you need to take like the, the, the type of client, their budget, um, their, pers uh, their, their ambition in the future and see what is the best road for them forward and what are the best choices from now on the short term and the long term. Um, and that should reflect in your uh, architectural choices that you're going to make in the role of Drupal or SaaS services or any other framework that you use has to play within that roadmap as it were. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I do believe in composable architecture um, and, and uh, we're really looking in how to combine those. So I yeah. think that's, that's the approach that fits us the most. Yeah. Is this approach at Swiss you, you use as well? In the end, th there has been a well where uh, companies and, and uh, developers were really wanting to de decouple everything. Yeah? Yeah. So it's like, it has to be decoupled and everything has to be deco decoupled. Um, Thank God we skipped that phase and uh, <laughs> actually uh, thought about, okay, what's the value of being decoupled and how does it bring new value for our clients? Yeah. And in the end, you see that there's, there's a lot of use cases where it's, where it's useful, mm -hmm. but a lot of the times 
for for uh, things that Drupal excels in. It's it's fine to have an, uh, an old style website and just make sure that that your caching and everything is handled well, and the user experience is going to be as well as a as a as a decoupled website. So don't do it just to do it. All right. <laughs> So um, going back to Drupal, we are here with a lot of developers. Um, are there specific Drupal features? This is the first question for, for Heine. Are there specific Drupal features or functionalities that you believe are underutilized or overlooked by developers? I can't really think of one, because I also don't have a clear insight in what kind of uh, features de yeah. random developers in the country use. Um, so that's difficult. So to assess. Yeah. And that's a difficult question. I was just wondering, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you could share some of your experience you know, while using some of the features or functionalities that you think, hey, hey, this is something you, we, I always work with. Um, yeah, I, I work a lot with Search API. Almost all our Search APIs, uh, our searches are powered by Search API. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure if, if uh, other companies are doing the same. So if they use Core Search, there's a lot of. Uh, 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 features left on the table. I think uh, Search yeah. API is very easy to start with if you just use uh, database search, yeah. and you can uh, fairly easily switch to Solar, which provides more power for certain uh, yeah. features. Do you, you agree with that, uh, Tom? For the Search API part, uh, I really agree. Uh, I think uh, I think you uh, mentioned the right stuff. Um, um, some things about overlooking. I yeah. think um, uh, the editing perspective. Mm -hmm can be overlooked uh, by developers. Um, uh, being a developer myself, I, I always, um, well, I, I was building websites. You, you are building an application. But in the end, uh, with, with Drupal, you're building a, a system that has to be um, used by, uh, by the editors. Yeah. And they have to bring the good content in. And from the good content, you get a good website. Yeah. So you have to make their lives better. Yeah. And I think that's something that's overlooked, uh, um, even by Drupal itself. It, it, it does take, a, it seemed to take a lot of effort to make a really good, usable interface. I think uh, mm -hmm. Drupal always kind of has to look at other uh, frameworks uh, to make some steps uh, in this pers perspective. Mm -hmm. But when you do take a look at some uh, modules, um, uh, well, there are good initiatives like um, I, from, uh, from my perspective, I really like uh, paragraphs, uh, of course. Um, but on paragraphs, there are really nice modules uh, like uh, layout paragraphs, which has the, the drag and drop mm -hmm. interface. Uh, we, have n we now have CK Editor 5, which is a uh, great improvement. So we are getting there, getting there. But it can be something that is overlooked. All right. Um, a question for, for Jeffrey. Um, we were talking about uh, the back end, the, uh, because there's a lot of users working on the back end. Um, as well, um, and there's there's no tech conference where we can't discuss AI, you know. And I've seen there's modules now available in which you can implement Chat GPT um, basically in your backend. Is this something that you have already seen requested by by some of your clients? Uh, hey, we want to work with this. Have you implemented it? Could you elaborate on that? Uh, yeah, we have some requests to well have some investigation on on how it works currently. Um, yeah. So for one client, we're trying to figure out uh, what it could add as value to the editors uh, in this case. And we see some potential. Uh, and we're try trying out the correct prompts to see what kind of request we can send to ChatGPT, for instance, and uh, uh, see what kind of content it could give back. Or um, how we, for instance, you have a page, send the content of the page, and try to make up like like a teaser intro of it in a maximum of this much characters yeah. to make the lives of the editors easier or or how to fill out meta tags for instance to improve on uh, SEO uh, uh, integration so that's something we're trying to investigate and I really see the potential of AI to uh, help uh, give the editorial editors an, an higher pace in their work because mm -hmm. The world is getting faster. And we need to deliver faster, not only yep. as developers, but also as the people who use the CMS or CMF or DXP, or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> um, and it takes a lot of time to be creative. And you yeah. need to think about 
uh, your audience, the customer, the type of wording you use. And when you're done, you have to think about the SEO words you're going to use. And things like AI can really help you, give you a head start, a kick start to uh, uh, figure out the right words or sentences or content mm -hmm. that you could use to start from and then improve on it. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's a bit of the direction that we're going. All right. And Björn, do you, do you see a future in, in which developers are becoming prompt writers? Partially. Partially, yes. I mean, writing good prompts is a way to uh, allow you to use your AI to automate parts of the business processes of our clients. I mean, we've recently done multiple experiments uh, based on uh, 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 based on the, the website of our clients. So one of its was, can we get uh, an AI to um, order a custom box? So we have a client that does uh, boxes on the right size, so it's better for the <coughs> environment. Yeah. And uh, can you get the AI to just order a box? Because you can tell it how the JSON would look. You can tell, and it works remarkably well. But in the uh, we talk about the impact for the website editors, but the impact for the people using the websites is perhaps even bigger. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at the possibilities of factor search as a different <coughs> way to get the right content, um, uh, you can create amazing things. We have a client that's uh, the Dutch magazine for healthcare, so NTVG. Uh, wow, that was hard in English. <laughs> um, uh, they have quite a lot of content. Yeah, they exist since the 1900s. Yeah. Uh, they have 300,000 articles. And we thought, what if you could ask questions to NTVG? So we feed, uh, we created vector databases based on all the content. Mm -hmm. We search by your question through those content and feed that content to JetGTP who gives you your answers, yeah. and that works remarkably well. Right. And the awesome thing is that there's open source models coming out now, there's a True. way to do this fully open source, and it gives you a way to talk to your web, to have your conversational interface for your website. Yeah. It, it, it's already working and it's already possible, even though it's sometimes le a little bit expensive to have yeah. it running. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I would uh, like to recommend LLM.university, which is a valid URL, I was surprised as well, uh, about uh, the background on these large language modules, how they work and how they can be used for semantic search, which is more it's, or less what It's you're such saying. amazing technology and it's, it's, we're on the precipice of a new world. All right, excellent. Okay, so, so uh, all of you have been quite a, a, a long time member of the Drupal community. Um, Heine, what's something you're really proud of, of, of what you've achieved over the last more than 10 years, I believe? Um, I'm proud of uh, some uh, remote code execution vulnerabilities I was able to um, uh, fix or get fixed in Drupal Core, mm -hmm. and some even before they were released. Um, I did an informal security review uh, on the update framework for uh, Drupal, uh, which was later scrapped, also due to that review, uh, and redone. That's what I'm very proud of. Um, and things that I'm not proud of, because I also want to talk about <laughs> that. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm, I'm yeah, that kind of person. Um, I'm, I'm the kind of person who really likes to uh, do the work himself, or at least, um, really likes to dive in and now that we have Michael Hess as a team lead for security I, I can see that he is able to achieve um, more and additionally uh, also additional goals because he is very good in getting other people to do the work which is really amazing to see so right. that's uh, uh, one reminder for everyone uh, also look at the people around you and what they can do and sometimes it's better to let something linger for a year or in my case six years uh, I reported to the issue six years ago on, yeah. uh, on Drupal, and it was fixed recently by someone else. Um, so sometimes it's just good to uh, depend on others. All right. And uh, Tom, what are you proud of? Um, yeah, you, you talked about uh, looking at the people around you when I look at my team. Of course, oh, um, um, I, I think I'm proud of um, uh, bringing new people to the Drupal community, like, like uh, people just start out. 
coding or people who um, are uh, using different frameworks um, uh, but could do Drupal but didn't already uh, check it out. Mm -hmm. And um, it's nice to see that uh, when you give some room and space, um, th they can al also add their uh, thoughts uh, to, the, to the community yeah. by maintaining modules or, uh, or even working at, uh, on Drupal core. Yeah. Um, so I I'm think I'm proud of that, that I get my team to work on, yeah. on Drupal core, I, I, uh, on Drupal. Um, uh, from, for myself, I think I'm proud of the, um, uh, of the modules I created for um, uh, combining Drupal with something not so open source popular as Microsoft, mm. uh, because Microsoft is all around, uh, all around us. And I worked a lot on these kind of modules, and it's it's always people that think, well, well Microsoft, yeah. but when we look at education, which we it's a it's a field in which we work a lot, um, it is used everywhere. So yeah. it is there. So it's you can better shake its hand than absolutely. take compete it. Absolutely. What about you, Jeffrey? Um, yeah, I think I'm proud of uh, all the different projects in the last 10 years that I helped build for the customers with uh, my colleagues at Synetic. Um, one specifically? One specifically. Well, I think um, one that's really uh, on top of mind right now is uh, Zorgboodschap. Yeah. Uh, but that's that's a funny story because <laughs> that's a Drupal 7 project. Drupal 7 project. So all we right. need to kill it. Yeah. Um, and that's something we're doing now and we're not really, sorry but we're not building it in Drupal this time because it's really a commerce platform, really large, and, mm -hmm. and we're looking for other solutions there. Yeah. But it's really fun to see how we built something on Drupal and that grew so large. It's like uh, like the, the supermarket online for, for the healthcare and it grew exponentially large that it really needs a an, 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 an commerce solution. Uh, so that's something I'm really proud of. Um, but also a project like Beo uh, um, and Caro and Cherve, uh, where we work on, yeah, we're still our customer for, for a lot of years and uh, still going there, doing new work, pushing the boundaries. So that's really awesome. Ah, nice, nice, nice. And what about you, Bjorn? Um, for if I, if I look at Swiss, I'm mostly proud at the type of clients we have. Uh, things we are doing right now, we just launched a new site for the Dutch TPA, Autoriteit Persoonsgevens, yep. which is uh, Drupal uh, 9, um, which is really great to see uh, those kind of companies coming to us and, and, and choosing us. On a more personal level, I'm proud to be a part of uh, uh, the core maintainers to help move JSON API along and uh, may keep Drupal relevant in, the uh, in five years because I think it's essential to do that. And more recently, proud of how many, uh, how much impact are the project update bot had on the uh, Drupal 10 release, where so many modules have been ready for Drupal 10 relatively to relative to Drupal 9, and uh, let's not talk about 8. Yeah. Uh, so that's really cool to have so much to be able to have so much impact in the community by do, just doing what you love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you, and you all should be proud because you've made not only impact impact on Dutch society with all the work and the projects you've been launching, but also the code that you've been delivering back to Drupal, the, the contribution you, you gave. So there's something all you all should be very, very proud of. So um, is there, you know, as, a, as, a, as a final, it is just wrapping it up, um, uh, if you can share one thing with the community, one last sentence, what, um, going back to you, um, uh, Bjorn, what, what is it you would like to share in, in one sentence? In the new age of Drupal, upgrades are no longer scary. So just uh, do your work and, uh, and join, join us in the future of Drupal. All right, excellent. Jeffrey. Yeah, I think uh, one of the things that makes Drupal strong is the community and also the, the fact that we're giving back bug fixes, improvements and stuff like that. Keep that up, uh, even when using AI to solve your problems. <laughs> uh, make sure that, that, that we give that stuff back to Drupal and make sure that it keeps on developing, growing and getting better and better. Very good. Tom? Yeah, I would also say come for the software, stay for the community. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Very good, very good. 
And Heine. I have a more down-to-earth uh, remark. Um, the public service announcements uh, about Drupal 7 EOL specify July as the latest uh, date for an update on the possible extension. And I would advise everyone to wait before doing rash things uh, to wait for that update. All right. Thank you very much. No, thank you very much for all your sh wise words. And uh, let's wrap this up. Thank you very much, all of you. And, uh, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. And thank you once again for indeed being part of the community and supporting and giving back. Yes. Without all you, right. it would be hard to organize this event. So Absolutely. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you for hosting us. Thank you.